On today's show, you're going to meet a newscaster who has her finger on the pulse of Toronto. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My guest today is Kim Geddes. She is the news director and anchor at News Talk 1010 here in Toronto. Now, you'll meet her in a moment. Later in the interview, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. And you'll hear Kim's. Well, Kim Geddes, it is so nice having you here on the show. Hi. <laughs> now, you have your finger on the pulse of Toronto. I mean, you've been covering news uh, for uh, a number of years here. Um, what is it about Toronto that you love so much? It's vibrant. There's yeah. always something going on. There's no shortage of, of news on a day-to-day -day basis. And not just local, but uh, local angles to national and international stories. We always have something to talk about. Always. What drives you crazy about Toronto? Ha! Ah, um, a lot of things, but uh, frenetic pace. There is absolutely no downtime for uh, news people in this city. Uh, even on a slow news day, for most people, we are run ragged. But you know, something you either love it or you don't. So it's all good. Is it stressful or very much? It, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I mean, be you honest. Pins and needles all day. Oh my God! Are we gonna? You know, this is live. You, you know, I'm gonna be that. honest. It's a lot easier when breaking news happens because you react. Right. And it's so easy. It's like who, what, when, where, and why, and you just you go with it. It's a lot more difficult to develop a story and go in to investigative pieces because it, it takes a lot to get the newsmaker, uh, and depending on the story and the angle and the issue, have them trust you enough to do the interview and kind of break that story down. So breaking news is a good thing because you're running on adrenaline, right? right. And you've got to get the story on and it's happening. It's the most fun. Now how do you determine what is going to make news of the day? Ah, well, a lot of it uh, you cannot determine. That's uh, the beauty of radio. It's so immediate. Uh, breaking news happens uh, on a dime, and you just have to be able to react to it. Um, but y you think about who your audience is, so in terms of demographic, and that's right, age and, yeah. and sex and uh, uh, lifestyle choices and uh, business angles, and then you just determine what news conferences our audience will be most interested in, and you just go from there. Sure, and so, I mean, News Talk 1010, it's known for its in-depth um, coverage, um, intelligent uh, talk shows. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we excel right. over a traditional news wheel, because when breaking news happens, uh, we cover it, and then the, uh, the talk show host will take it to that next level and go in depth and get the newsmakers right. on and do the interviews. And so the story isn't over when the breaking news hits. It's evolving and it develops throughout the day, uh, not in the body of the newscast, but then on the talk shows. And we can have the newsmakers react. And I think that's the beauty uh, that lead, has led to the longevity of News Talk 1010. You were the first female. Uh, news know, director at uh, News Talk 1010. Congratulations. Thank you. So when you first started, I mean, I mean, was it a challenge? Oh, yes. Being Very a woman so. um, first. And it, you know something, it, after I, uh, I got the job, I've been in it now a year and uh, three months, um, it dawned on me driving home from my uh, former radio station, I'm going to be the first female news director at CFRB News Talk 1010. This is an iconic radio station in this city. And I enjoyed the moment, and I thought, well, what took them so long? <laughs> you must have seen a, a change or progression for women in the field. Mm. Uh, you in, in the area of news, I mean, how has it changed for you? You know something? We've watched uh, women go from just being the giggle girl sidekick on morning radio and morning television to getting those plum assignments, whether it's international or local, and rising up through the ranks into the management positions, whether it's news director or it's sales manager or general manager. Those opportunities now, I think, are, are coming along far more frequently for women. And women are actually believing in their abilities that they can move into these higher sure. ranking management positions. So do you think that it's the matter of believing that, that is, that's the key element to it now with women stepping into? You know something, I think it's, it's that and it's also, I think, um, men who have been in those positions along the way, and I'm just speaking personally, 
have been and are realizing the benefit of being great mentors to women who are uh -huh. rising up through the ranks because women are really good at listening. And that's everything in this business, listening to whether it's the problems or accolades or to get anything done and done well, uh, being a good listener is paramount. So um, I think men are realizing that's a real benefit and an asset to the team. So there are people out there who uh, believe that men um, sound more like their authority figures because they have perhaps deeper voices than women. Um, what do you think about that? Poppycock. Ah. I no, that's uh, I don't agree with that at all. You don't have to have that deep, ballsy, resonating voice if you're a great storyteller. That's what cuts through. So, what inspired you then to want to be a journalist to begin with? You know something? When I was in high school, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I went to university because all my friends were going to university, and you can't uh, go wrong with more education. But I remember it was grade eleven. And I was doing uh, an oral presentation, a 20-minute presentation for uh, economics class. And seriously, when it comes to numbers, holy cow, I'm in broadcasting for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did this oral presentation. And afterwards, my uh, teacher called me back, Mr. Van E. Kirk. And he said, um, Kim, he says, have you ever considered a, a job in public speaking? And I thought, no, I'm in grade 11. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I said, why? And he says, you know something? I can tell you. Uh, you had one of your charts upside down. Uh, one of your graphs was a little wonky, but he said, you know something? You can spin a hell of a story. He said, you had the students on the edge of their seat. He said, consider storytelling. And I was like, okay. And I've, always, I've kept that uh, up here, and then I went to university and uh, college, and here I am. Do you think it's possible for women to have work-life balance? There's a lot of pressure for them to have that. But do you, do you feel um, that it actually is uh, uh, possible have. I do. Uh, I see so many uh, colleagues of mine, you know, great women who have a great support network. I think that's key, whether it's their husband or a partner or family, uh, someone else or others in their life to help shoulder the load and, and do the heavy lifting. Um, and I think that's true whether you're a man or a woman. You need that support network because it's really tough. This is not a nine to five job. This is not a career. It's a lifestyle. So unless you have someone who, who knows that and has your back, it's pretty tough to do. Now, you, I mean, you work hard, uh, obviously. Do you have time for any hobbies in your life? Um, you know, something I try to make the time uh, on the weekends. Uh, I, I used to be into antiquing a lot. That trend has kind of waned. But I, I do make time for myself every day, whether it's late at night or, or early in the morning to exercise. The physical bonus is, is one thing, but it's that hour or two where I de-stress. I leave the newsroom behind. I don't think about anything. I shut off my phone and I just work out and it's, it's a mentally, um, it's, just, it's just everything to me to, to exercise on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just, I de-stress. You know, social media uh, has changed uh, uh, how we communicate. I mean, the internet has changed how we communicate, but social media in the last few years has uh, really changed how the media reports. Um, how, what have you seen in terms of your experience with radio? How has social media changed uh, your job? Uh, I can't get over how many, um, whether it, it, um, organizations, government, police, uh, lawyers, city hall, put press releases out via Twitter now. If you're not on Twitter, you are lost, especially right. in this game. And it's 24-7, it's, it's immediate, and it's every action and reaction is, is constantly coming in at you on Twitter. And breaking news now, if you don't tweet it out there first and foremost, you are behind the game. And it, it, it's become part of our day-to-day our -day rule book. You get on the air with it in terms of breaking news, and you tweet it. It's just got to be that immediate because that's where people li live. Um, the reality of our job now, we are multi-platform broadcasters. So it's not just what we say on the radio. It's, it's everything in your handheld device. So people are getting their, their news and consuming it differently. They're consuming it on that mobile device. And that's Twitter. That's Facebook. That's YouTube. Uh, think about all the politicians you know now who will put out a, a, a campaign platform statement on YouTube. 
they're going there first. Why? Because everyone is consuming their news differently. So you either evolve or you are lost. So what do you think of the future of radio is? You know something? We are asked this a lot. Yeah. They, you know, they've sounded the death knell for radio 30 years ago, um, and it hasn't happened. In, do you know why? It's about local. Local, mm -hmm. local, local. It is our bread and butter. Uh, you wake up in the morning, and yes, you may be going to Twitter now. A lot of us are to get uh, you know information, whether it's traffic or weather. But you turn on the radio because it's it's your companion. What is the temperature going to be like today? Do I need a coat? Uh, what has happened in my world overnight? Uh, is there going to be a storm on way, my way home? Uh, and that's our survival is is local stories. So Kim, it's time for my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. I would say never say no. Never say no to any opportunity, any challenge, because if you say no, then you're not opening, your, opening yourself up to opportunities. You become paralyzed by fear, and if you're fearful, you don't rise to the occasion, and you don't learn or grow. So Kim, now, um, if anybody wants to find out more about you and check out uh, News Talk 1010, um, if they haven't already, where do they go? Newstalk1010.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, and it's just Kim underscore Geddes. And I'm following you now, by the way, on Twitter. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. I really appreciate you being here and sharing your story, and I wish you all the best. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure. We're going to take a quick break, so stay where you are.